Oh, it's so good to see him smiling again. Yeah. And you know what won't make him smile? When I murder him! Welcome to the Black Irish Podcast. Welcome to an all new episode of the Black Irish Podcast with myself, Brendan McCorkle, and Mike. I don't know where he is, Crawford. What's up, dude? <laughs> What's going on, Brendan? And I'm right here with you, baby. Where else would I be? So from an undisclosed location, we'll keep you keep you under wraps here. You're starting to get a little too famous. But hey, <laughs> <laughs> speaking of being famous, though, hey, could you make something that's so delicious you could call it something terrible and people would still order it? Like, could you, yes. yeah, could you make like a German chocolate cake so delicious you could call it a Hitler cake? And people be like, Ugh, whatever, I gotta have it. That's it. Absolutely, bro. Yeah. Absolutely. People would actually eat that shit up. It would probably make it better for them. What it would if probably it, make it more uh, famous. What, what if it was a drink called the Bill Cosby? <laughs> I guess it would have to be a jello shot, right? <laughs> yeah, but, uh, women might not like that so much, but men would buy. But I'm saying, like, what if it was the most delicious drink ever? <laughs> would you order a drink called a Bill Cosby? Yes. Yeah? Is there <laughs> is there anything that would be off limits? Jeez, <laughs> we're starting out strong. No, Nothing? Man, Bill Cosby, why not? You know what Harvey going, Weinstein? You know what it's right, going to lead to at the end of the night? <laughs> what about this? What about... Okay, we're wrong. What about... <laughs> um, we got to... You got to tell me the food. So, like, Harvey Weinstein. What would Harvey Weinstein be? Like a deep-fried Twinkie? <laughs> <laughs> No, man. Or you can, like you give me a food, I'll give you an evil person that's associated with it. But it's got to be, like, over-the-top delicious. <laughs> give me some food. It's gotta be like. Give me some food. Like a brat wrapped in bacon, like some a extra brat wrapped in bacon. <laughs> Yo, that would be so good. Now That's that a Donald that Trump, would... dude. Just cholesterol city. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, you know what you're getting. You, you know what it. you're getting, and you're just like, yep. Yeah. All sign right. Me up for it. <laughs> or um, what oh, else? Man, you got? What else? Could, what else what is else delicious? Man? I mean, I mean, food is delicious, but the German cake one, you stole that. That would be wild to call that a Hitler, but. Um, I don't want it to be racist, but I mean, racist is kind of the funniest. <laughs> it sells, man. Bullshit sells. All right, fine, sells. whatever. Speaking of food, though, I'm going to go on a December diet. Starting, We're recording December 1st. I'm going on a December diet. So what I'm going to do is... Like, I don't know. I got. I just got to do something better because I've been eating like garbage. Which, by the way, do you ever weigh yourself before and after you take a dump? No. Oh. It's always, like, there's some where it seems like it's an opportunity miss. Like, oh, man. I bet you I, I dropped a few LBs on that one. I wish I would have done a little prep work on that. <laughs> I don't know. No, just me. It feels like I dropped the cover. You feel like you lose weight when you poop? Oh, sometimes, yeah. I shit aggressively, bro. I'm sorry. It's just how it works. I do everything in my life aggressively, including love mm-hmm. and shit. <laughs> Dude, but I don't know. what. It, okay, so here's what I'm thinking. I'll allow myself like 20%. I'll allow myself like six days where I don't need to work out or like diet can be off the table, whatever. So like six days. So that'll be like New Year's Eve counts, going somewhere with my family for a couple of days. So that'll be two or three days on Christmas. So I'm only going to have a couple of floating days in there. So I think it's going to be a little difficult, but not, I don't know, manageable to say the least. 
So. Well, December, you don't. I mean, it's, it's not. It's only one holiday. Like it's Hanukkah. Christmas. We're hanging out with our friends for Hanukkah this Saturday, oh, so that, that's going to be a cheat day. Latkes, baby. Woo. They're so delicious. So delicious. I heard Hanukkah's a, a hell of a holiday to celebrate. It is. It's awesome. Our friends uh, before Kobe, like back in the past, would just invite their friends over and like, hey, let us teach you about Hanukkah and all this kind of stuff. So it's it's very cool to, you know, kind of people we hang with and the kind of stuff that they do. You know, it's like, hey, you don't know about it? Let us teach you. You can hang out with us and then you can go home and do whatever you want. You know, it's the way it should be. Then they'll come over for a Christmas thing, I'm sure. It's all good in the hood. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. But, oh, dude. Gonna say, it's all good in the hood. Yo, but you know the benefit of Hanukkah? You get a lot of gifts. Eh, not necessarily. So, you, you get you a very kids, specific number a, of gifts. Yeah, but if you have kids, that's like over seven days. So that's a lot of money spent. Yeah, hey, that's exactly one extra day. A proper what? work week. <laughs> Eight, oh, days. It's eight days. Yeah, See, I don't know. I thought it was seven. A See, baker's dozen of, of a week, if you will. You get an extra day. It's a leap. Yo, who sells baker's dozens? Because everywhere I go to get a dozen, I only get twelve. Where can I get that? That's because in, you go bro? to these chain bullshit Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> fucking, you know, might as well be working at McDonald's of donuts. It's just, it's a chain. You got to go to a mom and pop, a, re- a donut shop, a local shop. <laughs> Baker's dozen is 13. That's just what it is. You get the 13th for free. You buy a dozen, you get the 13th for free. Because donuts cost, I don't know, 14 cents a piece or something. So if you buy more than 10, they're they're excited and they throw one in for you. Do you like donuts? Yes, Krispy Kremes. And they only give me 12, buddy. Yeah, because it's, again, Krispy Kreme. But Krispy Kreme yes. is like the in and out of donuts. They're very particular what? in what they you, do. You don't. Time out. Time Stop out. it. Time you out. keep. Time you out. always go to quality. And quality <laughs> is opinion based. Quality is opinion based. I'm talking about the business strategy. Damn it. Okay. Okay. You win there. It is pretty much the same thing. Actually, lately, Krispy Kreme's been having all types of wild donuts, like cream filled donuts, and they've been advertising the shit out of them. Are they delicious? But at the basis. The strawberry ones were delicious, but I'm a strawberry guy. Yeah, so, you are. but at the basis of it, and they had like some Oreo ones that were okay, but they went a bit over the top on some of them. Just so, original. Man. Mike's an original. But warm. the original, yeah. I only go when the lights on. Like if the lights not on, I don't want the shit. Yeah, <laughs> they gotta be hot. I want the hot ones because they melt in your mouth, so you can eat about three before you realize you've eaten three. Because <laughs> they just like disappear. And again, with no milk. How is this no possible? Milk. What do you eat with I can it? Drink water. What do you drink with it? Sprite? It, water? Water. Sprite. Whatever. Anything, man. It don't matter. Uh, you ain't drinking no milk. You buddy. know, speaking of milk and strawberries, my poor little three year old, he he's gone. Those he's never going to be able to enjoy a strawberry shortcake in his entire life. He's allergic to strawberries. Now he joins you in the lactose fuckery department where, you know, he's allergic to cows boobies. I don't know. It's just <laughs> awful. Poor little guy. It just kind of sucks. Oh, yeah. So he was kind of sick over this past week. The little little man, we were realizing this lactose issue is way bigger of an issue than just an intolerance, you know, a mild intolerance anyway. So, so he was getting sick around the house and then uh, finally found out that my dog Rocco will, in fact, eat throw up. So that's cool. <laughs> So then it's like, oh, your breath already stinks. Now it's got baby puke in it, too. That was milk. It's like the worst of the worst. Because milk just turns into, like, cottage cheese in your stomach. It's so disgusting. (laughs) Good thing I don't have that in my stomach. Because, yes, it is nothing but crap from milk. And then it's a mixed in with some pus and some blood from the cow, too. So, you know, <laughs> you just got all that in your stomach working Whatever, with you. Whatever, dude. You know, Hot awesome. dogs are fucking delicious and they're all the extra parts ground up so you can't tell what they are. I don't care. Give me hot dogs. hot dogs. Either. Whatever. Bacon wrap brought. Have you I'm had these bacon. Reese's Big Cups? No. Oh, dude, that's a solid. But have game. you had the Snickers with the brownie bite. in it? Yeah, we've talked about this. We've okay. yeah, the Snickers with the brownie is good. That and Quicks yeah, does cookies and cream, but you can't have that. But yeah, yeah the 
The Reese's Big Cup is a solid bite. Uh, oh, I found out a little... Uh, this is why I need to go on a diet. I found out another candy trick is I got my peanut M&M's and, you know, the quote-unquote shareable size. Yeah, right. I'm going to share it with both my hands. That's it. So <laughs> I realized... I'm like, man, I want to eat this delicious <laughs> the delicious little uh, treats, but I'm also doing my daddy stuff. I got the kids around, so I'm like, man, I can't be eating candy in front of them. <gasps> Brilliant idea. I put the M&Ms in the refrigerator for like an hour and then just emptied them in my pocket. So I was walking around. They won't melt in your pocket if they're refrigerated. So I was walking around just chomping on peanut M&Ms. <laughs> You know you live in California, right? So eventually, they're still going to melt in your pocket. Yeah, but I don't, ate them I don't pour the entire bag in there. It's like I got the shareable oh, okay. size. Like okay. I said, I got like a handful, put it in my pocket, and then douse right. a couple at a time. You know what I'm saying? Just go okay. through the motions that way. That works. It was that fairly works. brilliant. I was very proud of myself. I don't you know. You should have been, sir. You should have been. And on the re- you pulled it off. So on the reverse side of that, something that I used to do was like... Dallas would be so kind as to make me like homemade sandwiches for my lunches for work and stuff. But she would make them, you know, put them in the refrigerator the night before or whatever. So what I would do is I would just leave them in my car so that by lunchtime it was like warm and I could eat my regular <laughs> sandwich. <laughs> or if I had like, uh, if I had like, you know, some leftover pasta or something, like just leave it in the car. It'll be like, Warm, no. Like room temperature at the least. No, I, dude, sometimes <laughs> in the summer, man, that thing would be better than a microwave. Natural. <laughs> it naturally got to temperature. It was perfect. Hey, uh, I Some people think it's gross, it. but I also... I it's don't okay. Know. I'm, I'm kind of a gross Tell dude. Tell me to judge their mother. Hey, chicken nuggets. Okay. We've had this conversation before, too. Whoa, 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 not this particular conversation. Chicken nuggets. <laughs> What is the appropriate serving size, and how does it go up? Like, what age does it change? I don't know, man. So what's like, the smallest serving size of, like, chicken nuggets or, like, home chicken nuggets you would warm up and, like, give to a child? What's four. the smallest? Of, four. Okay. And four. at what point do you move up to six? Probably, like, 10, 11. I mean, you know oh, you get shit. bigger. All right. Okay. And then at what point do you progress to the next one, and what number is that? I mean, that's probably like teenage years. You get to the 10 or better, and then when you get our age, you just go in and ask for the 20 piece. (laughs) (laughs) Then after you bust the magic dragon, you're like, I'll take the 20. (laughs) 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 And uh, supersize those fries. And they're like, nobody said supersize anymore since that fucking movie came out. And you're like, you know what I'm talking about, lady. (laughs) <laughs> don't forget to salt them or I'll have to assault you <laughs> definitely need that salt man. oh man I don't know okay so I've been overfeeding my kid obviously he's throwing up everything because of what I'm putting in his stomach I kept I was always giving him six he's three I was always giving him six and then my wife's like that's kind of a lot and I'm like Meh, I don't know McDonald's seems to think it's regular <laughs> I probably shouldn't go off my portion size off McDonald's, though. You shouldn't. And but I also think they six, do have a four-piece now. I don't know. Huh? I, don't I mean, if you can eat six readily, give them six. Why not? I don't know, because you're not supposed to, I guess. I don't know. So, I said that. But also, like, the suggested use instructions that come on anything don't really apply to me. I don't suggest Well, those use. are serving size, and it tells you how much that affects you per their percentages that you should have per day. So the hell with those people percentages. Who the hell didn't tell me what I'm supposed to eat? Yeah, and so what if I keep a fork <laughs> in my car at all times? Exactly. Or oh, hot sauce in my bag, like Beyonce. Hot sauce Shoot. in your bag? No, I don't have a bag. No. That was just It just came to me, so I said I like ah. it. Oh, yeah. I, legit- I don't even eat hot sauce, really. I know you don't. You don't like spicy, really. <laughs> but I always, I always do have hot sauce packets and a fork in like my center console, in whatever vehicle. You know what? I'm in. And that's perfectly fine, Brendan. It should be right. You're a man. You should have that if you're in your car. If you want it, buddy. What you talking about? But it's the same fork for like a long time. 
Is that okay, weird? Well, I hope you cleaned it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, I cleaned disgusting. it the way I clean my stuff. Hmm. Like, I just make sure it's licked all the way clean and wipe it with a napkin and then stick it back in the center console. <laughs> That's absolutely disgusting. I just want you to know that. Why? It's okay. clean-ish. Cats clean their young by licking them. Those sandpaper So you're tongues. comparing yourself to a cat now. No, I'm just saying I've seen it done in nature. I don't know. Nature's oh, usually. Well, I noticed wrong. this already, actually. <sighs> Why is that so gross? To a cat. Is what? It's my that your fork that you lick it clean and then use it to See, eat uh, and then uh, put it down you, and lick it clean. You just said it yourself. You lick it clean. Yeah, I do. No, no, no. You lick it to clean it. No, no, no. Like whatever. Then I'm, you use it to <laughs> eat. Whatever I'm eating. And then if you need I'll it again, you lick it again. Yeah. This is the same mouth. It's, it's not really cleaning the fork, my guy. Okay, the so what? Set in your car what's, and let your germs hang on, like hang eat on, you hang bait. on. Now that we're here, what's getting it dirty in between the time that I've already stuck it in my mouth? And then wrapped it in a napkin and put it in the center console. The germs in your mouth and those germ particles in the air of the, the world. The germs in my bro. mouth are going to be germy anyway. I'm already going to be not. The and mouth. plus when they incubate, they, you know what I'm saying, it just no, gets no, no. nasty. There's only incubus in my car. No incubate. <laughs> you live in California. It's hot, man. Like, everything incubates. I in know. Your well, huh? it's, look, it's already next to the food it's going to be. You know, styling with anyway. I don't know. I don't think it's a big deal, Mike. I think you're making too much out of this. Big deal? I wouldn't say it's a big deal. I mean, you ain't you ain't got sick and die. Yes, we're gonna let it. We're gonna let it go with it. But um, it's kind of nasty, bro. Oh, uh, whatever. Just because you sterilize all your stuff. Ooh. I, I definitely pretty much do. I even get hot water at restaurants. Like, bro, you look like it's nasty out here. Have you not heard of COVID? Yeah, but I see you're, I think it's more of just a, a train of thought where it's like you are the, you know, hand sanitizer guy. You're the make sure everything's clean guy. And that's great as long as you stay in that lane. I'm the guy that just is like, my body will adjust. My immune system will be stronger because I take on all of these microorganisms one at a time. And then it's like, ah, oh, you're just fine. I don't know. You know, it's like, it's like when you're, when you're a kid, it's like, do you wipe them down all the time or do you let them get dirty? So they don't get sick all the time. If you, if you bounce from one lane to the other, you're going to get fucked. But if you just stay in one lane, you're good. You pick the clean lane. I pick the low road. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and, uh, did you do anything man. this uh, Thanksgiving weekend? What did you do on Thanksgiving? Just watch football? And eat, man. And eat. And then stop talking to people because the Cowboys off. Yeah, that was tough. Yeah. Very tough. And there's no way we should have lost to you, that team. Well, in your defense, dude. The uh, the Cowboys get penalties like the Raiders get felonies. Like it was the flag throwing frenzy. It was insane. It was like it they was. could they didn't even have time for makeup calls because they were just like, oh, we just threw eight flags in a row. How are we gonna make this up? It's crazy. It was absolutely bonkers. <laughs> but I don't know. I mean, other than that, food. Food wise, it was good. Food wise was good, man. Food wise was good, but that 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 makes it all bad. Well, well, my neighbor's fence on Thanksgiving blew down to their backyard, so that could have happened to you. I was out walking Rocco. I'm like, oh, we're gonna get ready to leave to go over to my mother in law's, like in like an hour and a half, two hours here, and it was like, okay. Um, let's go take the dog for a walk real quick and then go outside and notice that the neighbor's fence, like a nice 10 foot section of fence is just from the winds down on the sidewalk and like open to the main street. So I'm just like, okay, what are we going to do here? So I go like knock on the door. Nobody answers. Like, um, what exactly are we supposed to do here? I'm like, I guess I'm just going to go grab some stuff out of my garage and try and like figure out how to close this hole because their backyard's exposed. And it's the neighbor, my back neighbor. 
So it's not something that I can like just ignore. It's that it's somebody yeah. can walk into their house. But luckily well, somebody not that, but you said yo okay, so the other side, not where the bull mastiff is. No, 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 not where the bull mastiff is. So it's the <laughs> okay. it's the because I wasn't fixing any gate near that damn dog. No, it's no, it's no, the no. neighbor behind us and they have a wood like an older style just wood fence that leads out to the main street and a section of fence had fallen over in the winds and stuff. So anyway, so luckily they came out, guy found me or was like, Hey, did you need something? I'm like, Oh yeah. I'm your neighbor, buddy. He's like, Oh, okay. Uh, I was like, your fence fell down. He's like, Oh crap. He's like, okay, I think we can make this happen. So we get the fence up and you know, his, his backyard buttoned up. So nobody's going to steal any of his crap. And then head over to my mother-in-law's. We have amazing food. And then I, I went to, uh, I drove my grandmother-in-law home, which I don't think she'll ever hear or see this, so I don't think she'll be offended. But I, I drove her home, and I realized that there's a certain point in life where it's like young people and old people tell stories the same way. There's a lot of pauses, a lot of repeats. Because it's all the same. It's half of it's made up, Brenda. No, I know. It's like it's, it's like, like fables, man. <laughs> it's like you get to your <laughs> teens, and then you start having real things to talk about, and then it's like you go all the way until like maybe I don't know, like five years after retirement, like your seventies, maybe seventy-five, and then it's like you revert well, you back to. You got some good friends, man. My friends tell fables now. <laughs> not even fables. Not even stories. Just like. So then I went over to this place, and then I us- I go to this place because I like this place. And then um, when I got to this place, and you're like, oh, my gosh, what's the story? Oh, no, I'm talking real-life fables. Like, you know, when you were in a kid and you played Broken Telephone? And then now it's more so of someone hear about something, and but they want to tell it as if they were there. So now the whole story changed. You know how uh, I'm telling you it's, it's, it's that type of situation. So for real, it's reverting back to when you were a kid because you're just putting, you're just adding on pieces. Yes, it really happened, but you've turned this and twisted it. So, so now it looks like a whole different situation. But yeah, I got you. I got you on that. It's it's way more interesting if, like, you are more interesting as a person if you were there when something interesting happened. I get that. But it's also one of those things where you could just be like, hey, I heard this, and then just be a good storyteller. That's just as good. It is. I mean, I don't disagree. I'm just telling you, man, what happens. People want to, want to I don't know. put themselves at the, at the event. <laughs> Well, you know who doesn't fuck around was uh, the maestro. I went golfing with him on Friday, so that was fun. Golfing. I can't wait to go golfing for the first time. It's going to be amazing. Do you want to go golfing? Yeah, I just want to like have the experience, get some beers, walk to 18, drive oh, the golf bro. cart. No, no, no. Yeah, I was like, you don't need to walk. You don't walk the 18. You just you just drive. I mean, you do both. You walk some between some holes because they close. You drive some hole. You know, like the yeah. experience, man. I yeah. mean, I've played putt putt and done like the hidden range at Top Golf. But I'm not, like, You've been to Top Golf. I haven't been to Top Golf. Do you all have Top Golf? No, that's why I haven't been. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Top golf, you better get to the West Coast, buddy. I just, I just, I just hooked you up right there. You see, look, they don't even got top golf. Well, I actually, I think they may be opening one in like January, and then I think there's oh, one in Vegas. It's pretty amazing. There's one in. But if you're only gonna have one, then you're never gonna get in. Like you're gonna have to like book it a week in advance because we have two, and it's hell getting it in there. <laughs> it's like axe like throwing. Every day. <laughs> oh, we got that here too. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Uh, we got um, archery is gonna be next. Is archery is gonna be next. Actually, you do all that at the same place. It's called uh, throw social. Oh, uh, throw social. All right, yeah. throw social. And you break stuff. That's <laughs> a wild place. What's the next thing gonna be like? Churning butter? Are we just gonna keep turning back the dial until it's like, oh no, it's fun to do all this old timey shit? I mean, sipping paint is now a thing, bro. So we can go. I mean, we can sipping go back paint. Like, Sip and paint, like sipping wine and or 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And oh, painting. dude, we had, we went to. <laughs> I've done that. Drink and paint. It's not sipping <laughs> fucking sipping art or whatever you said. <laughs> <laughs> no, we did uh, for a friend's it's birthday. Paint, man. <laughs> for a friend's birthday, we did that at a bowling alley. Like, gosh, I want to say like six or seven years ago, maybe. <laughs> But yeah, we did at a bowl. It was like half of the. It was like a you know the bowling alley bar, quote unquote, was actually a really cool bar or whatever. Really, you know, they always had events and shit there. So we did that. There was like twelve of us or something like that. All these couples. We sat down, got hammied, and you know, this was an hour of instruction, and we're painting this landscape, whatever. And it's like, all right, you're going, and we're actually doing well. You know, it's like, all right, I already caught up to this part, so I'm going to go grab the next round, and, you know, I'll come back and catch up, blah, blah, blah. And that's like the last 10 minutes, like, yeah, I know where you're going with this. Uh, Let me just finish this. But the best part was after everybody got sloshed, we just went up and hung them all around the bowling alley and left. So they got some nice free artwork. (laughs) I'm sure they didn't want it. Yeah, yeah, well, hey, it definitely livened up the place. Still there. I doubt the bowling alley's still there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. You uh, say you done the... Oh, man, that is sick. I hope they didn't move their business to COVID. <laughs> uh, I think it was just a shitty bowling alley. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to give them the benefit of the doubt, man. They were renting out the bar for painters. I mean, fuck, how good could they have been doing? Karaoke Bro. must have been bare. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Anybody can throw a karaoke machine up there. I hey, listen, know. man. They were trying to make money wherever they could. You want to rent us out for paint? Oh. So then we, uh, so then we actually did. Is. We did something else this Thanksgiving weekend. Transitioning into the weekend part of it. We did a family car wash. Not like we were out, you know, soliciting our skills, but we just washed the car together as a family because we, we had to get rid of Doc. The Prius is dead. We're like, fuck it. You're out of here, bro. So before we <laughs> shipped it off to auction to get, you know, scrap money for it, basically, it was like, all right, let's wash this thing up. You never know. Maybe somebody's going to, you know, dump a little money into this thing. So we did good old fashioned family car wash, which was nice. That, that had to be fun. beautiful. Y'all should have took pictures. We did. Well, y'all got a ring, so you're probably on the ring camera. Yeah. You can always true. rewind those. I always forget that <laughs> they record. Because, like, sometimes, you know, like, there's been times where I have friends over, like, forget something, go drop it off on their doorstep or something like that, and, you know, they'll talk, see somebody's at the ring. And I always forget they can record. They're like, oh, yeah, I'm saving that one. You know, I'll say something stupid. I'm like, oh, damn it. All right. Remember that for next time. Don't be a smart ass because then they'll out you every time I forget. Every time I forget. Definitely. Oh, but, yeah, Doc is dead. Doc is dead. Oh, good old Doc, man. Good old Doc. Doc had his run. Did have his run. And it was, you know, that was it was totally worth it. it it's probably the one of the last cars where I will ever have to clean out CDs like I did. <laughs> there is a, cause Doc had a six CD changer in him. So, you know, my car doesn't even like have shit. Like there's no CD player. There's no yeah, record. It's too there's new. No shit. It's too new. <laughs> like, like what? What if I want to listen to see, what if I have like all the old fucking jams, bro? And I want to see play CDs. I can't. Nope. That is bull. I know. <laughs> like the, the world is getting too modern, bro. Like, okay. That's what I'm saying. I gotta still have a CD player. I still, I don't care about playlists. Like, I'm still, I do mixtapes, bro. I'll burn you a CD. I don't give a shit. That's I make my own playlist now, though. It's the dopest thing, bro. <laughs> I'm just gonna be real. I'm just gonna be honest. Make it a pl- playlist is kind of dope. Uh, yeah. It's kind of dope. Especially on Apple Music, when you can literally put any Anything. song in the world on. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, Mike, but uh, here at the Black Irish Podcast, we do something uh, Spotify playlist every week, and it's the same concept. 
<laughs> bro, I know. What are you talking about? I'm just saying, like, I didn't know how dope it was, just the process of being able to pick any song you want in the world and, like, and make, I have, like, a thousand playlists, bro, for every occasion. <laughs> oh, me just... too. Me too. I ha- Oh, yeah. I ha- Dude, I have a playlist on my, on one of the, the apps. That's for a house party that I have not thrown yet or don't even plan to throw. I'm like, <laughs> when it's the right time, I'm playing this shit. I know it's going to hit. I got a club play this. Like if I'm in some club situation, like if I'm in the car wanting to be hyped Get up, amped up. Club, and then I got a throwback club. <laughs> like it's old school song. That yeah, that's the hyped. one where you're going to the club now, but with some old homies. And you're like, yeah, all right, let's throw this one on. I like that one. What else you got? Oh, no. And then I got a shower playlist. Do you have two shower playlists? Huh? Do you have two shower playlists? No, just one shower (laughs) playlist. But I have a chill playlist that I sometimes listen to in the shower. Uh All right. And then I got, you know, rap. I got a sophisticated rap playlist. And then I got a mumble rap playlist. And then, you know, I got my favorite rappers playlist and then I got playlists for different rap groups like if I want to listen to just Rockefeller or just CMG or just uh, 300 the label which is Lil Baby and them or well I guess they changed their name to not 300 no more uh, quality control but you know how's your Lil Baby situation I don't know. That's still a weird situation. Still up man. In the air? And then they, yeah, and they've okay. been going back and forth on the internet because the next day he came out and said it wasn't true. Then she put a picture of them, him and her, like <laughs> secret, like she was secretly revealing that it was him because she didn't put bitch. his face in it. That's what I'm saying. It's like, this broad's fault. These women, man, they're always downfall, bro. Be careful what you ask for. Oh. Find you a good one and keep her. Oh man. And, um, yeah, so, but that's still my God, man. But yeah, it's a weird situation. Cause, um, but I kind of think they don't like each other, which makes it kind of okay. The fact that y'all just have to act like you like each other is the weird part. But yeah, yeah that really part don't I don't like, care for. Yeah, if y'all really not friends, then I guess it's okay. Y'all don't like each other anyway. So, you know, you're what probably would be doing it because you don't like them. Is the first ever collaborative diss track. <laughs> that shit would blow up if you just had if you recorded that they just had their shit together ready to go same studio face each other with like a clear plexiglass wall in the middle so nothing could fucking happen that's that's pretty much battle rap bro i know but if they're the same label come oh, on that's that what i'm be, saying that's that what i'm saying that would be like epic. They just put them in the same booth that they record their their albums in, and they go, no, 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 you guys are going at it. You guys can free write whatever. You guys, you know, not battle rap, but we're gonna. You guys will both get yeah. the same melody. Like we'll produce it, but you guys will do it live in front of each other, and we'll record that. Bam! That would, that be, would be shit, dude. That would be so fire, but they would probably have to fight afterwards. That's why you gotta get the bulletproof glass in the middle. You can't take no chances. We both gotta go home. And we gotta fight. Oh, you're probably separately, you guys gotta be like separated, and you know, one, somebody's going to Cancun, somebody's going to Russia. Like you guys gotta cool off after this shit, bro. Yeah, because we gonna have to fight, bro. <laughs> oh, speaking of fighting. MLB is officially locking out, I guess. Not officially, but by the time this comes out, it'll be official. Yeah, the MLB probably should have been locked out. And yeah. every time they lock out, they never get what they go in asking for. It's always half ass. They have no backbone, the, the MLB PA, bro. Like, you know, oh, shit, we're going to start missing checks. Because the broke people in the baseball can't afford to miss checks. And it's a lot more of those than the people that we hear about who just signed these long-term deals, which is the, which is the thing that people don't understand about negotiations with pro athletes and pro leagues. All we think about is the dudes that make millions and millions of dollars. Well, there are a lot of people <laughs> who don't make millions and millions of dollars, and they live check to check like you 
and me and the next person, they live regular lives. Not saying that I live check to check or you live check to check per se, but I'm just saying like. Yeah, and not to say that their their checks aren't big, but needless to say, they are check to check. You know, their their houses are bigger, their mortgages are more, so they're paying more. You know, it's all good. Yeah, so they need their money. They need their money because they got bills. And they not, like, they start wanting to push back. Like, bro, we need to sign. Like, so we need to sign something. Out. So check it out. It lasted seven minutes before they walked out. And we're like, yep, this ain't going to happen. They rejected the, the league rejected the union's proposal, the players' union's proposal. So, yeah, because they're asking for a minimum contract, and the league's never going to go. The owners are never going to go for that. Yeah, so what the owners wanted was a 14-team playoff. And, uh, and you know, a bunch of other crowd. They wanted, like, uh, sponsorships to be on the jerseys now, which the players approved. They said they would approve 12, that's just more money. They're, 12 they're playoff okay games that. and patches. So, dude, before you know it, they're, you're going to – you're – Prideful Yankees and Red Sox and Dodgers uniforms, all these classic uniforms, Giants included. There, it's going to be like soccer. It's going to be Bro, like it was the same conversation when basketball started. Do you hear anybody complain about the logos that basketball players wear? I mean, no, I don't like them, but I'm not going to complain. Exactly. Eventually, it'll be uh, whatever. That that shit is just extra money to play these players who are asking for you to pay them more money. That's why their players agreed to it. Because they're like, okay, yeah, we're going to sign off on anything that's going to get y'all more money because we want some of it. So, look, we're going to sign off on all of that, but we're going to sign up off these men. I don't need to be going to arbitration after my third year. No. I need a minimum. At least this much after I've produced this much and then this well, that period. Was, that was the other thing. And that's why it only lasted seven minutes because the players' <laughs> union, what they were asking for – what, so they approved the patches. They said they would do 12-team playoff, not 14. Um, they wanted them, the league, to drop the six-year uh, reserve as a uh, before he could be a free agent. The league was like, nope, not nope, doing that. <laughs> they wanted to get, uh, they wanted to be able to get paid more earlier in their service. The league was like, nope. Uh, the service time, they wanted to fix tanking like figure out a, like a safety net to where people couldn't tank and also how the league uh, manipulates service time because, you know, time served in the MLB. It's like, oh, no, no, sorry, we're going to send you back down to the minors for, you know, the last month of the season. And, you know, you come back. Or and they don't bring they, you up when you're good. They say, oh, we're going to wait to September for a call-up so you don't get time served. You're not even a rookie exactly. this year. You're not a rookie till next year, buddy. So, yeah, that's not going to count. So we ain't got to pay you yet. Bro, the MLB is the it's crook. Like real real talk, <laughs> Rumbia is a, I mean the MLB is a bunch of cooks. You get you get people to play for under a million dollars for six years. Like you pay them dirt. Like Judge was the MVP of the league making like a hundred and ninety one K, bro. A hundred and ninety one K. Yeah. What? For eighty two games, which is me even in baseball terms, is is not a lot of money. Like that's a little those are pennies. Yeah. And the thing about it that sucks for him is that if he's a free agent after year three, he million, million dollar, million dollar contract. And yes, he's going to get a big deal, but it's not going to be as big as he wants because he's tailed off a bit, buddy. And what about your boy, Corey Seager, getting 10 years? <laughs> Yo, I didn't know Corey Seager was that good. I'm sorry. I just didn't know Corey Seager was that good. $325 million good? That's Mookie money. He's good. He is not as good as Mookie. It's, but then again, mind. Mookie also didn't get the contract he deserved. So, No, Mookie didn't get the contract he deserved. He definitely didn't. And let me ask you, how old is it, Corey Seager? The age comes into effect. Okay. And he's never been to arbitration, huh? Nope. Yeah, so he just went straight free agent and they paid him. Mookie had to go to arbitration for two years, bro. <laughs> Isn't that crazy that Boston did champion MVP and they didn't want to pay that man? They traded him away because they didn't want to give him $30 million plus dollars a year. And then Scherzer is getting 40, is. $43 million a year. And, <laughs> so at, and he has, after the second year, he has the option to terminate the contract and sign with somebody <laughs> else. It's the most baller contract ever. 
but it is. It's he deserves to be treated that way because he's ma- and by he the way, literally that's, the pendulum. That's what the league is doing. They're signing these people to all the like the owners. They're like, oh, we're gonna Come overpay on. these guys now because we don't want the CBA to be so a big, it blows up. <laughs> yeah, so it's gonna be like you know what we're gonna overpay these guys up front, but we're not gonna have to deal with it for years to come. So they're throwing money away. Well, it's, it's only three dude, years. It's one point like, six billion dollars in free agency has already been spent. Well, because Texas spent six hundred on those two dudes. <laughs> I didn't even know they Simeon got the was that good. All of but I looked up him, and Simeon is pretty good. And now, yeah, Simeon's. I good. heard someone the other day say on uh, Baseball Tonight, they have the best infield in the major leagues right now by signing those two guys. Are they yeah. really that good? And Corey Seager going to stay at short. Or he's going to play second. No, he'll be well, a short and play, play second. Okay. And I didn't know my team's in the market for a short. I'm like, what? Where are they going to play? A second? Because you're not moving Xander. Xander doesn't move. That is Xander's <laughs> spot. Y'all can cut it out. So unless they come into Boston to play second, because that's where we're weak at. We've been trash at second since Pedroia left. Shout out to my guy, Dustin. I Did love Dustin? Dustin. Good old DP. That's my guy. Who doesn't Even love though DP? He broke, his body broke down. Dustin's because his swing told you his body was going to break down. Like he just swung it from the hip. Yeah. But Dustin, I tell you, boy, you a Red Sox for life. I love me some Dustin Pedroia, man. That's my guy. But since Dustin, we've stunk at second base, dude. To but win an MVP the guy as a second up, baseman, that's impressive. We picked up the guy the second half of the season who couldn't play in the playoffs. He was pretty good. I forget his name right now. Well, obviously, he wasn't that good. He would know he was he was he was pretty on torch, but he, I was mad we couldn't. That's how good good he was. I was mad we couldn't have him in the playoffs. I can't think of his name right now. But I heard we were thinking about. I don't even like Carlos Correa. Like I don't like him. I don't like his personality. From what I, I don't know him personally, from what I see, I don't like his personality. I don't want him on my team. But once he puts on the jersey, if we sign him, he's my guy. Yeah, he's <laughs> like, a Red Sox I'm a fan. So yeah, exactly. He's my guy. Yeah. So transitioning to hoops, did you catch Duke Gonzaga? I did catch Duke Gonzaga, and they looked unbeatable. And then they go out and lose to Ohio State last night. Bro, eighteen-year-old kids like baffle me at times. Bro, I tell you. Did you? I forget which announcer said it, but one of them it was like, uh, it was you know with a, like three or four minutes left in the game, like aggressively at the camera. He's like. Yeah, and you can lose a game and still win a national title in basketball. Not like football. Like, called out college football. I was like, fuck you oh, guys. Oh, probably Dick Vitale. We're better. He always no, it wasn't Dick. Football. I think it might have been Jay. I don't know who it was. I, like, I forget. Jay Bullis doesn't like college football either, so it could have been him. Yeah, it was just, it was hilarious. And then, it come to find out, you know, Timmy's getting propped up, propped up, propped up all this time. And then, turns out he's not cutthroat at all. He's just like, if you don't follow me, I can't win. I can't finish. It was like, ooh. <laughs> ooh. Yeah, Drew Timmy. Drew Timmy had a stink game. Hey, on that note, what were you saying? You were saying something that made me think about something else, and now I fucking lost my train of thought. What, about the football thing? Oh, yeah. If they fuck Notre Dame because of Brian Kelly, bro, I tell you. College football, if y'all watch our show, listen to me. Look me in my eyes. Oh, shit. This is about to get real. No, it's not going to get too real. But those kids work too damn hard, bro. To hell with Brian Kelly. Their next head coach is on the staff already anyway. I sure fucking what I'm hope here. so. Oh, please let it be Marcus Freeman. That's what I hear. That's what I've been hearing on all the radio shows, that the defensive coordinator, right? Yeah. Yeah, I want to. Okay, so yeah. My ideal scenario is they promote Marcus Freeman to head coach, and he keeps Tommy Reese on as offensive coordinator. That would be my ideal scenario, and then he promotes from within, you know, his linebackers guy, you know, to DC and whatever. Yeah, like, so that I've would been be hearing ideal that for me as he's a Notre the number Dame one fan. candidate. But this is also. But they're Notre talking Dame, to so Penn State's. You know, Ray Finkel, and they're talking to... Uh, the Penn State's coach, he just signed a new deal. Or he really no, going to leave? Well, they said they were going to talk to him. 
And then uh, Cincinnati, your boy at Cincinnati was like their number one target. Fickle. He's, he's pretty good. But I'm going to tell you the number one option. They just they can't talk to him now. He's got to wait. Urbanio? You know he's the number one option. Yeah. Anytime he's had that written in every contract he's I ever know. had in his <laughs> life. And he's like, man, no, I'm definitely he, not even considering yeah. it. It's just like, yeah, today you're not considering it because you're not technically you can't allowed say you're to. Considering yeah. it. Ask you him the day after the go, season's buddy. over. Ask him week 18 and one day. He'll be like, I am moving to Indiana. <laughs> Indiana, bro. Like, if his wife okays him to be continuously coaching in the stress of recruiting, my guy. He he's probably gonna be leading the Golden Domes. She'll be like, actually, she's probably pushing him. She's probably like, listen, you know the type of reputation you need to have as a man, as the Notre Dame football head coach. No more of this dancing in bars, you motherfucker. You go coach those Catholic boys, <laughs> and you get your head right. <laughs> yes, sir. No, for real. He'll probably. Oh shit! Golden Urban Dome. Meyer just went to the top of the list. Never mind. So no, Urban Meyer is always at the top of. Anytime Northern Dame is even thinking about finding their coach, Urban's at the top of the list for me yeah. because his Florida job and his Ohio State job. You had Northern Dame; these are two prestigious schools themselves, and you had Notre Dame written into your contract. You can't tell me you don't want to coach at Notre Dame. You could sell me that. You could. No one can tell me that he doesn't want to coach at Notre Dame. When they were going to fire Brian Kelly, but he was a commentator, and Brian Kelly was on the hot seat supposedly. I thought it was going to happen then, but I guess he told him no, yeah, like so four they years decided to keep <laughs> Brian Kelly. Yeah, well, and that's the other thing, too, is that's his perfect exit from the NFL. Like, listen, the only reason why I'm leaving is it's because it's my dream my job. My dream job. Blah, yeah. blah, blah. When, in fact, he's like, fuck, this is harder than I thought. It's so competitive <laughs> here. Like, even if you have the Urban best game, it. you could still lose. Shit. Exactly. And then Saban did it already, so it's not going to be like you're the first. Everybody's not going to hate you as much. Just go and turn Notre Dame into a perennial power because that's what you do, Urban. Hey, I'm down you with that. The the Aaron Hernandez is of the world. And he, 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 you, you win football games, buddy. <laughs> Look, it's not about personality. It's about winning football games. You get away with it when you win football games, okay? So what? About, all right, so what about Lincoln Riley taking off to USC? How do you feel I'm about that? I'm not mad at Lincoln. Me neither, but did you? He also brought his number one recruit with him. He didn't bring him. He changed schools on his own. He's a junior. <laughs> he, had a, he had a whole nother. He got a whole nother year of high school that he could have. I know. So anyway. why didn't he wait though? That's pretty aggressive. Because <laughs> everybody knows he wanted to play. Listen, you know what's hilarious? You like, know what's hilarious though is this kid is like, nope, I'm following Lincoln Riley wherever he goes. If Lincoln Riley has a better option for quarterback, and this kid. Goes to USC. Guess what? You're sitting on the bench, dude. It doesn't matter how much you love Lincoln Riley. It doesn't. And if Lincoln Riley has, like, for example, like, you're a junior, so you commit, if Lincoln bro. Riley has to coach some guy that's a sophomore this year and he turns him into a bona fide star, you're not coming there and starting next year, buddy. You're going to be a bitch rider. Sorry to say, that's just the facts of what college fo- football is. But it's at the, the end of the, the day, works. He thinks Lincoln Riley is his best way to whatever his – because Lincoln Riley, when it comes to quarterback, is in college, it looked like the GOAT nowadays. Like, he's putting up – bro, if you play for Lincoln Riley, you're in Heisman contention, and you go to the NFL. Yep. That's it. Period. I don't, like, if your goal is the NFL and to win the Heisman, he's going to help you do both of those things. His last three quarterbacks have done that, all three of them. So do you want to know his, a top ten pick who is not having a great – NFL career is Josh Rosen. So Josh Rosen, <laughs> the Josh Rosen kick of the dick of the week is just his. I just want people to know his full name. It's Josh Ballinger Lippincott Rosen. He's a four name dude. I'm just saying yeah. he didn't even yeah. play this week. So there's really nothing in a row. That we there's brought up Josh Rosen there's for no nothing to all. say about Joshua Ballinger. Lippincott Rosen, except uh, he watched Matt Ryan play this week. But, dude, I'm just saying, back to the coaching carousel. And somehow he made the show. For some reason, he made the show three weeks in a row, and all he does is watch Matt Ryan play. But go ahead. Tell us about Josh Rosen. Bro. No, that was it, bro. That was it. I didn't want to get back to Brian Kelly, though, because. I love Brian Kelly. 
<laughs> LSU, I'm I'm putting my if I can put money on it, I will. LSU is going to win at least two titles in the next five years. Yeah, Brian Kelly gets the athletes that he wants. He can coach. Brian Kelly can coach football. Please, man. But I don't know about titles because Lincoln Riley and USC with the athletes he's able to coach. If he gets a good defensive coordinator, because you can put the the offense is fine. I don't care who's out there. Yeah. Give me some athletes at receiver. We're going to be fine on They're going to average 35, 38 points yeah. a game. Yeah, he's Easy. he's fine on offense. If he gets anybody who to come there, but that's the thing about it, you can recruit those aggressive type of dudes in Southern California. You know if he what? Puts a net you, around dude, Southern California. You know what? I wrap. wouldn't be surprised. I, I'm throwing a wild fucking hair out there, but I wouldn't be surprised. I think the Seattle coaching crew is all going to get split up. Like I think that's all going to disband after this year. I don't think Pete Carroll's going to be there anymore. I wouldn't be surprised. If Kenny Norton maybe dipped Goes down back. to USC as a defensive coordinator, or at least was in the conversation, that would be a fantastic think, fit. No, Pete Carroll's not going anywhere. Now Russell is going. Russell's going to be in Cleveland next year, buddy. You think? But Pete ain't going nowhere. Really? Yeah. I I see. I was <clears throat> other way. I was thinking Petey was going to fly away. No, no, no. No, right. PD's, PD's going to keep it. They're going to get something for Russ, probably. But think about it. They're probably going to try to get some early ones. So Cleveland isn't the highest because I don't think they have ones. But I think it's going to settle with. I think he's going to end up in Cleveland. I like him in Cleveland, too. Cleveland or somewhere is going to be quarterback needed, like Denver. Something like that. All right. Hey, I did want to ask you about the uh, the NBA. So, the Bulls and Heat both got penalized. A second round draft pick each for tampering with Lonzo and fucking Kyle. Well Lowry. worth it. Well, that's what I'm saying. NBA teams now are just kind of like, oh, we know the penalty. Yeah, we don't give a shit. Like, we're <laughs> barely okay. Like, if we're not in the top four or six, like... After the first six picks, nobody gives a shit anyway. So, <laughs> like, you're going to take those away? Yeah, we're going to tamper every single chance we get. Take them all away. We don't give a fuck. And, nobody by the way, if shit. we get better by the people that we're signing, we're not even going to have one of those first six picks anyway. So, fuck it. <laughs> take that one, too. Makes take them so for all better. the years. I don't give a shit. I'm mad they didn't trade for him last year, bro. Like, we should have traded for Lonzo. We shouldn't have and, waited for this free agent. We should have uh, traded for Lonzo. And by the way, Michael Porter Jr. <laughs> My man signed his contract and is immediately on disability. Way to go, buddy. <laughs> hey, Michael Porter Jr., I don't know how you pulled that off. Yeah, but... buddy. Dude, Salute that's an all time move. That's an all time. He's just going to be just playing a regular contract. My man got a max, max deal, deal and is going to be and playing he, what, Xbox for the rest Suns of the season. Are now, <laughs> oh, sorry to cut you off. The Phoenix Suns have DeAndre Aiden. And did you see him versus Golden State? No. I know you don't stay up late to watch. You got kids. Yeah. But he dominated Golden State last night. I love dominated, him. Dominated, right? I love him. And they wouldn't give him the max, but Denver gave Michael Porter the max rookie contract, and the boy is having back surgery. Yeah. <laughs> Tell him, boy. Yeah, that's quite a move there. And oh, they lucky man. people aren't like petty like me, because I would I would go every time something like that happened, I would go full Kirk Cousins on everybody. Very impressive. Ultimate punch. <laughs> 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 I would definitely go full Kirk Cousins on you. Yep, you didn't want to give me a deal when I told you to give it to me. So now I don't want your money. I'm going somewhere else. I don't want it. I don't care if you offer me the max. I don't want it from you. I'm going to get it from someone else because you, this, you drafted me. This shouldn't be questioned. Our relationship shouldn't be in question. But now I don't rock with you. Bro, as and a Lakers live. fan, could you imagine if, you know, as LeBron fades into. The, uh, you know, his knees crumble into dust, unfortunately, or whatever kind of weird ectoplasm he has holding them together. As he rides <laughs> off into the sunset, if DeAndre Aiden came over to the lake show and then Anthony Davis played the power forward like he wants to for 
God only knows It'll what reason. For him. And then you have those two bigs, and then Russ can run around like crazy with the ball and just play his career out in L.A. like he's always <laughs> wanted to. Bro, that could be another super team. Yeah, but you don't have – unless LeBron's deal – I don't think LeBron's deal is up anytime soon. You don't have the money to sign it. Yeah, you, they can figure it out. Yeah, but that's a hell of a move. No, perfectly. And just for the – to have the side of Anthony Davis so everyone knows, college, playing center in college, you don't really bang. You can play a lot of zone, and you can help weak side. Before – he went to college. The, his junior year, he was a point guard. This is why he doesn't like to bang. Because he never... People who bang came up banging. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's... They've been big most of their lives. Like, you don't turn into a big man. You're not on the AAU circuit as a point guard. And then he woke up and was six inches taller one day. So he had to play inside. Yeah, but just his refusal to play the position is... Because he don't want to get, like, his body, he know it is. Do you know, know how often Anthony Davis gets hurt? Okay, how many games do you have to play at a position to qualify for it as a whatever? Man, regardless of what you do, he don't want to deal with the banging because his body is not built for that. But I'm saying if you if he picked 10 games to play at center against, you know, smaller teams or teams that didn't have, you know, big men necessarily, then – he could get selected to the all NBA team as a center first team. And that's where you get paid and all those bonuses. So like to me, he aggressively doesn't want to play center because of that. Like he could get paid so much more if he just qualified as a center, but he's like, no power forward. That's it. He can't get paid anymore. This is the NBA. You can't make any more than the max. The max is the max. But it, it? you don't get bonuses for making certain, you know, winning a title and making the All Star. Yeah, team I mean, you get bonuses That's in your contract. Saying. Yeah, he reaches all his bonuses. Man, this is Anthony Davis. He plays his game per year. He hits his true. numbers. If they go to the playoffs, you get a bonus. The further every round, you probably get a bonus. But yeah, like he gets, so he reaches all those numbers. Ain't no, ain't no center qualification. This isn't like the NFL, bro. Like you get franchised at the tight end, and you get paid less than getting franchised as a wide receiver. No, this is the NBA. All right, LeBron makes the same amount of money as Michael oh, Porter Jr. This is your favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Think about that shit. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but Michael Porter Jr. is not going to be in Space Jam 3. So LeBron should be the number one person in the world saying NBA does not. It is moments like that that you realize NBA shouldn't have mixed contracts. There's no way Michael Porter Jr., a dude who's not even going to play this year, should be making the same amount of money as the, one of the greatest players of all time. Like, there's no way, no how, this shouldn't be happening. Max contracts are... Baloney. Well, it is what it is, sir. I don't know what to tell you, man. Hey, uh, by the way. They're nice. They're nice people. NBA players are nice people. You need to turn down the nice and turn up the naughty in fantasy football, bro. You well, just so you know, not to, to get ahead of myself, out. knock on wood, I've already looked. I'm favored in every game for the rest of the season, so we just got to win. We just need the There's whole two team. games left. Before what? the playoffs, you can only be favored in two games. So let's not. Whatever, however many games it. are left in the season, I'm favored in both of them. I I need you to win. I need, I you need to, to win, win too. Because if I win, ooh, it's because but I need Russ to show up. Just to let everybody know, I I'm I'm still two games ahead of everybody at the top. But then two through five has all made the playoffs. So there's one spot left. <clears throat> And I'm fighting. And Mike is one game out of the sixth and final. And I'm slowly, I'm slowly putting a team together. I'm one receiver away from just letting my team ride. If I find me a receiver that I have trust in, I'm just putting my setting my lineup and letting it ride. And he's on the bench, but he won't come back from the pub list. Who is it? Michael Thomas. If Michael Thomas comes oh. back, I'm putting him in my lineup. Oh, please do. You'll get four points combined in the last two games. Man, they have no one else to throw to. He would get all the points. Who else would you throw to on the Saints? Michael Thomas would get every pass. 
Guess what? That's why I just picked up the person that's going to win the league for me. Taysom Hill. He's going to be my number two quarterback going into the playoffs. Yeah. I hope I get you in the first, second round, man, because Taysom Hill stinks. I know my Cowboys play against him this weekend, and I shouldn't say that because it's probably a jinx. Actually, tomorrow, probably a jinx, and he'll probably go out there and throw 300 yards versus. Oh, well. Taysom Hill's bad. Yeah. He's a really bad quarterback. Jalen Hurts is bad, too, but guess what? He's a good fantasy quarterback. Yeah, except for he's hurt. He might not play this week, so what are you going to do, buddy? Play Taysom Hill. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you're, let me go ahead and tell you. It, you're not winning the league with Jalen Hurts and Taysom Hill as your quarterbacks. It's just not happening. I oh, refuse bro. to allow that to happen, bro. Oh, no, no, no. I'm going to do it just to spite you, just to rub it no. in, just to show you how much better I am than all of you. You want to know how dogs. great it's going to be when I win this and you have to put Dax Dingleberries on the trophy? Oh, I would do oh, that gladly. Goodness. I would throw the last – I would throw the title to you. <laughs> Hey, nah, do you know how that. great this is going to be that I'm going to stand as the champion with <laughs> Dax Dingleberries <laughs> on the trophy? I love it. And do it proudly. Yeah, you got that swagger with you. Have you started watching Swagger? Still no, not yet. I told you I got to find a way. I know, I know. I you just know, keep, I'm going to check every week until you do. And you're going to be like, I won't ask you one week. And then you're going to be like, oh, yeah, I already saw the whole thing. It's pretty good. It's just because once I start watching it, if it's good, you know I'm gonna watch it. Yeah, it's something that I keep going back to and looking forward to. So it's good. It's doing its thing. I think there's maybe like three episodes left. So we'll see how that goes. There's uh, something that came on that I cannot turn off when it comes on, and I know you have movies like that, but this is one of those like silly ones. Four brothers. No, that's my movie, bro. You I like love it? that movie. Yes. Yeah, dude, I cannot turn it off if it's on the television. It's like I get sucked the in. The thing is pretty bad, but I, yeah, I'm it's pretty bad. But everything else is awesome. <laughs> and the whole premise of it, I, I'm a fan. Of. I'm a fan of that movie. Shout out to them. Because that's the same way I would go if somebody touched my mom. It's on, buddy. Yeah. I mean,. I don't know about Marky Mark dropping end bombs, but you know, different times. Hey. It was his mama. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Sometimes people Mark. get angry and say silly things. I get it. Shout out Marky Mark, man. You know what? No one ever has said anything to Marky Mark about that. Like it just Yeah, it just yeah. like he got a pass. <laughs> happened in life. Like, <laughs> it was like it was in a movie. He didn't He was a it. different character. It's not like he was a white dude that grew up in Boston or anything. He's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Not putting that on him. Just saying. Oh, he definitely hey. boss. He probably robbed banks too. Do but, you know yeah. who Ernest is? Right. Like Ernest saves Christmas. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you like Ernest? <laughs> Not anymore. I watched that, Ernest as a kid, bro. Is there a black Ernest? No. Is that Medea? <laughs> <laughs> shout out to TP. Hey, shout out! No, I don't shout out TP. I don't show TP no love around here. I worked in his. Uh, I worked in his house once. Oh, for real? You should have smacked him while you were there. No, it was, was he there. was getting a brand new house built somewhere ridiculous, bro. Like you know, super million dollar house. This was a decade ago, at least. And uh, I was installing appliances. You still have smacked them. And it was like every single person, because we were installing appliances. So it's like the, uh, you know, most of the house is complete. We come in at the very tail end, like with the finishes, with the painters and the flooring and all that kind of stuff, the cabinets, all that kind of stuff. Is mm-hmm. That's when we come in. So by that time, all the contractors, like our buddies, like, or at least the, the guys that like each other are. And so they'll talk shit and like, we were always cool with everybody because we're like, hey, what can we do to make your job easier? And they're like, usually the appliance guys are assholes, but these guys are like, oh no, don't worry about it. We'll take care of the electrical. We'll do everything for you. So they were like talking so much shit about Tyler Perry and about like (laughs) his uh, activities and who he's around and, you know, like 
all these shenanigans. Oh, and, pay. Yeah, and it was just kind of like like the way he dressed when he would just come and check on the house, like, are cameras here? It was like, nope. That's just <laughs> what he's doing. It's like, oh, okay. He just did, really. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if you had a black Ernest. Hey, and how do you know that you don't like Ernest anymore? Cause I ain't watching them. I know, but I was just I was just thinking the same thing the other day when it popped up on the TV. I was like, you know what? I might need to give this a shot with the kiddos, with the eight year old anyway, and see if I still like it or if it's just so bang your head against the wall stupid that I can't deal with it anymore. I don't know. <laughs> Figured it was worth a shot. All right. Hey, it's always worth a shot, man. Ain't hey, nothing wrong with catching a good laugh. I can laugh at anything, so. If there's a good laugh in it, please watch it, man, because we all need to laugh more. Oh, my gosh. Speaking of which, I have a ton of holiday movies that I've started to run through, but I am not going to go through it this week. Maybe next week, and I'll just add more to the list and give you all a quick update. But if you do want to <laughs> laugh, the Friends episode in Season 7, Episode 10, The Holiday Armadillo. It's a fantastic episode of television. I highly recommend it. Hey, since we're talking about friends, everybody go watch. I'm going to come back next week with the exact episode, but just go watch the funniest friends episode of all time. Which is? When they find out Rachel, um, <laughs> hold up. What was it about? All I remember <laughs> is my favorite part. I'm trying to remember. You don't even happened. know. The no, they were keeping wrong. a secret from each other. I'm trying to remember what the secret is. That she's pregnant. You know, no, was it that she was pregnant? Yeah, at Monica's wedding. No, no, no. When they got back, and then no, when they knew about when they found out about Monica and um. Oh, Monica and Chandler. <laughs> yeah. And oh, and they were hiding Joey. it from them. Yeah, and so my man Joy said, "But y'all don't know that we know that they know that we." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo, that is literally the greatest episode of all time, bro. I'm telling you, bro. Listen, I literally can watch that part and just die laughing, even though I know it's about to happen. Joy's a fucking fool. Just let me say that. And Phoebe doesn't get enough credit. Shout out Phoebe, man, for her role in Friends, because she don't get blown up like everybody else, but her dumbness is pretty funny on the show. Shout out, Phoebs. And she's a freak. That's Whoa, nice. that, ain't, that ain't nice. That ain't what? got nothing to do with me. What? I mean, she's a she's a TV character, bro. Yeah, that's know. what I'm she's saying. In the show, don't get too into it. So is Samantha. You into her too? Samantha, who's Samantha? Sex in the City, bro. I never saw it. Oh well, you want to watch some freak shit? Watch Sex in the City. No, <laughs> no. I'm not even gonna. And go yes, there. before somebody asks, yes, I've seen Sex in the City all five seasons. What? What about the movies? Thank you. Yeah, I've seen the movie. How can you watch all five seasons and not see the movie? Come on, <laughs> because bro. you realize you've made a giant mistake with your life. <laughs> bro, listen, I don't watch any show that has good drama. I'm not gonna lie to you, bro. Like it's Wait, intriguing. but you cut it. No shit. I, we were gonna wrap, but now we can't. What you will drop after a season that you don't like. You'll drop a show even if it has multiple seasons. Why? Because it's not good drama, but I'm but I've already committed, so I gotta finish the season. So if I've committed to three episodes, I'm gonna knock the season out. I'm gonna knock I'm gonna get through it. But I'm not gonna watch the next season because I don't wanna get caught up in like what's the show with the shipwreck? I'm done with them. They can come back with seventeen more seasons. I'm over it. But my point being that you or the enjoyed wreck. Sex in the City. I did, but Sex in the City has a lot of sex. All right, so it was on HBO. So let's get let's. All right, so Sex and the City was like fifteen years ago, right? I'm, I'm yeah. I'm well, were you fifteen age. years old? You wanted to see I, when Sex and the City TV? started. I was probably an adolescent. I was probably an adolescent when Sex and the City started. Ugh. Dude, yeah, I was on. like working like at Watch Barnes Real and Noble, sex bro. or something. I was working. I was working at like Mars and show Privates. They do, and Sex and <laughs> the City came on HBO, right? Yeah. So. And then there was a freak like Samantha in there, bro. So you like it's it's intriguing, bro. Like there's a real drama to the show, though. Like it's an intriguing show, bro. It goes about marriage and shit like that. All the freak shit that people be doing behind closed doors, the wild shit friends that do to each other. Like it's a decent show. 
Yeah. Why do you think it went for five seasons and is as good as it is, famous as it is? It's a decent show, bro. Because it's Lady Get off the fact that it's five women, bro. Like, there's men all in the show. Relax. No, I know that. I get it. I mean, I've I've seen a couple of random episodes, and it was like, "Ah, that was about as much as I ever laughed. And I was not connected to any of the characters. So oh, I, mean, the I know everybody identifies as somebody. I identify as fucking bored with that. Oh, but, I don't identify with anybody on that show. Come on, Unless not Mr. Wiggle Mr. or Big. fucking what was the guy's name? Who, Mr. Big? Yeah, that's the guy. Ooh, Mr. Big. <laughs> uh, we're like Mr. Potato Head. <laughs> but Mr. Big was that dude even though he did carry wrong like seven times bro. hey did you see I saw I just was wrapping up BMF because I just kind of have to at this point like, even though it's completely just awful now it's I getting worse it up too. It's I getting think I worse. finished it yeah I think I might be done with that there's not enough drama to keep me intrigued oh, I think I might be done with BMF too it's really really tough it's bad especially if you know the real life story like you're like bro this acting is bad it's so bad so bad and then they're just killing like sorry but they're just like killing off like a cu- one or two people that are actually the only people that can act and you're like fuck <laughs> who's left <laughs> Oh, but it did recommend for me the Who Killed Tupac miniseries or series, whatever. Have Mm. you seen that? No. It's, I don't know. I don't think that, you know, they give you any information that's not out there. They just kind of put it all together for you so you don't have to independently research all the stupid shit. And, you know, it's kind of like one of those Finding Bigfoot shows. You're not going to get an answer, but they're going to show you a bunch of clues and shit. I don't know. I might end up watching that. But other than that, it's just Christmas movies in my house over and over. I'm going to watch Ernest Saves Christmas this week and tell you how watch it is. Watch him save Christmas and New Year's. Is there a New Year's? <laughs> I'm just talking shit. Out there right. probably is. There's an Ernest does everything. Man, just go get you some Ernest. Sex in the City. Jump right into season one. Debbie. Have some fun, man. Enjoy your weekend. Your wife will love it. All right. Well... You know what else? I'm just joking. Don't watch that shit now. At, at 35, I'd probably break every CD. Really? <laughs> Don't watch that shit. Yeah. Why are you know. so violent? What? I'm not violent at all, man. I'm the nicest guy you possibly know. I don't know. I don't even, I don't even promote violence, man. I'm the nice guy, man. Good. Hashitashi. Namaste. <laughs> uh, <laughs> don't know what that ingredient is, but okay. Namaste. Uh, <laughs> That's what you said to end the yoga, man. You when was the last yoga? time you yoga? Hmm, it's been a while. Why don't you yoga? Because it just means like peace, peace in the day. So, All right. Namaste. All right. Have a nice day to you too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and everybody else have a nice day. This week's uh, Spotify playlist is Smashing Pumpkins and the Spinners. I happen to love the Spinners. And I have a friend who loves the Smashing Pumpkins, and I love I don't spinners know. too. <laughs> I'm going to uh, <laughs> not that kind of spinner, different kind of spinner, much older, I less expensive said that spinner. On the show. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mike, I'll make sure to edit that out. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, if you want to see Mike and his love for spinners, follow him on Instagram at Black Irish Two One Three. You can follow me at Brendala Seven. You can follow us at Black Irish Pod. Check us out on YouTube if you like, or anywhere you podcast. Be sure to share if you like us, or share if you don't. Make fun of us. I don't give a shit. Love y'all. I don't need it, man. Just show love. Have a good week. Peace. <laughs>